as more and more news print and hours and hours of TV news debates are being wasted on the border standoff between India and China, let's take a moment to pause and ask this question. Are we being played by a fringe group of the Chinese media? Less than 3% of Chinese read English, but English language newspapers are full of editorials and commentary on the Sikkim border standoff with India with a lot of bullying being used in what amounts to be a media war. Reza, I'm going to name the names here. Global Times, People's Daily, the People's Liberation Army's media outlets, with a little bit of help from nationalist trolls in China, are sort of raising this issue, whereas the official version on this is totally different. Who are these people really? Well, there has been state media in virtually every country. Uh, even India has a state media. We have Doordarshan and we have All India Radio. But when you compare Doordarshan and All India Radio to the Chinese state media outlets, you know, the difference is glaring. These are amazing outlets. Uh, the kind of commentary, the kind of opinion pieces we've seen in, since the standoff began. Now, these are all controlled by the Communist Party in some form or the other. They are either related to the Communist Party's propaganda machine or they are under the Information Ministry of China. Uh, most of these organizations are led by people who are chosen by the Chinese uh, uh, Communist Party or they are uh, Communist Party officials themselves. So, in effect, most of them are just, uh, you know, giving a voice to what the thinking is within certain segments of uh, the Chinese government. Now, let's put this in context. You know, whenever the domestic things are not very well, uh, there is a tendency for some countries to say, look, there is this enemy, you know. And a number of things have not gone down well for China. The One uh, Belt, One Road initiative, initial enthusiasm waned. Uh, President uh, G uh, uh, Jinping's uh, visit to Hong Kong uh, was not uh, much of a success. The death of the Nobel laureate uh, Li Xiaobao uh, uh, is, is, is uh, raising human rights issues once again. So, uh, do you think that it is also a way of, uh, you know, shifting focus from uh, the domestic issues? Well, I think it's a combination of two things. One, possibly an attempt to divert attention from domestic issues. Two, and that is more important for us, China has been trying for some time now to rewrite the boundaries to its advantage. It has clearly, you know, sort of uh, done its patrolling and road building in such a way that it, uh, it, it becomes a fait accompli for them. They go and construct a road in a certain disputed area or they start patrolling in a disputed area and then say that, look, this is the place where which is Chinese territory and the border is beyond this point. So this seems to have been the same issue here and uh, you know they came into an area which is claimed by Bhutan and started building a road. Of course the road also has strategic implications for the chicken's neck, the short uh, you know piece of land that connects mainland India with the northeastern states. So it is an attempt to, I mean the Chinese media's uh, reports are an attempt to you know, kind of reinforce the Chinese government's stance on this issue and say that, look, we haven't done anything wrong. It's India who needs to get out from that area. But if you look at the foreign ministries of India and China, there, uh, the, the, if you read between the lines, there is always this talk about the possibility of resolving this with uh, negotiations and not necessarily through a military means. Of course, both sides are saying that they have to uh, pull back the troops from the area. Uh, but do you think that that is a better way of looking at it than you know the kind of bullying sort of narrative that is coming out of the a section of the Chinese media? Well, I, I'd like to just uh, you know uh, take your attention to some of the reports we've seen in the recent last few days in the Chinese state media. We had a report where a former diplomat said something like the Indian troops should either withdraw or they'll be killed or captured. I mean that is just an example of the kind of stuff that has been appearing in the media again and again and again in the Chinese media and you know this is stuff that you can't really ignore when you're in the Indian media because you know this is what the Chinese state media is saying uh, I admit that some people have played it up way more than it's necessary in India uh, some have taken it in a more balanced way but coming back to your question 
Definitely. I think the foreign ministries on both sides have stuck, struck a more nuanced tone. They have, uh, you know, stuck to diplomatic issues. They have, uh, you know, spoken about the ways that this can be handled. Clearly, if one were to go by what the Chinese media is doing, it's certainly not helping the issue. Yeah. I think at, at closing, I would just, uh, you know, turn the mirror to ourselves, to the Indian media fraternity. The first question that I asked was, are we being played? And if, if, the, uh, if we look at Indian media, a section of the Indian media at least, particularly some television channels, have taken it up on themselves to wage this war against China, uh, which is an unnecessary war if you really look at the official positions of uh, the Indian government as well as the Chinese government that talks are the way to go about it. So if, if these uh, um, uh, you know, friends in the media fraternity uh, are to help the hands of the Indian government, the best way to do it would be to listen to the external affairs ministry and to the armed forces that you know perhaps this is being blown out of proportions that uh, the talks are the way out uh, because those are the guys in charge uh, not the media fraternity so share this video if you like this because this contains a very important message thanks for watching